You know, jumping trains. Everyone wants to know what is the what is the reason behind the the name jumping trains. What does this rep? What does this album represent for JoJo in this era? Mm-hmm. Well, jumping trains is the a title track on the album, um, a song I wrote with Nazri and Adam. They go by the Messengers, and um, jumping trains represents the forward motion and leaving old things behind and moving on into a new chapter of life. For me personally, it it symbolizes my move from Boston to L.A., me, you know, going from girl to young woman and moving out from my mom's house and, like, exploring the world on my own, on my own terms. Mm -hmm. And it just means means starting starting this this next chapter. And who are some of the producers and songwriters or artists that you've worked with on this album? What's with a wide variety of people from Rodney Jerkins and Danger? Wow. Two new guys like the interns um, and some, you know, wonderful people that I got to co-write with, like Eric Bellinger and uh, Little Eddie and Nazri. So Shout it's out a to lot of fun. I mean, I've like had the time of my life making this album. Shout out to Little Eddie. Little Eddie's actually a friend of Kempire Radio. Shout out to him. Oh, and he was a friend of mine. Love him. <laughs> also, one of your friends, you know, um, Jeanette Claudette actually tweeted me. She said, I, well, she, I, I wanted everyone to guess who was coming on uh, Kempai Radio next. And she said, I knew it. Oh, that's my girl. Make sure to tell her I said, I love her cuz. <laughs> oh, I love her too. She's, she, she's a, a, a lovely girl and a great talent. Most definitely. But JoJo. I want to talk a little bit more. I, we're going to definitely get a, an opportunity to answer some of your fan questions because your fans hit me up like crazy. <laughs> they wanted to. They had, they had a lot of questions for you. But um, we, we were just talking a little bit about your album, um, Jumping Trains. Um, is, it, is it finished? You know, is there a release date? Anything like that? There are so many things going on behind the scenes, honey. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. Things are moving forward. We've never set a release date. I feel like people are maybe are a little confused about that. Mm-hmm. The album has not been pushed back because you can't push something back that was never, you know, set in stone to begin with. Yeah. So um, as far as recording new material, I'm constantly recording. Mm. Um, and we're in the process right now of mixing the songs that we've chosen for the album. You know, we're in label meetings, things like that. So mm. I... I you know, trust me, I feel a great weight on my shoulders for my fans as well as myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to, you know, release it as soon as possible, but we just want to make sure that the plan is right behind. Yeah. And is it true the other chick is, is finally on um, iTunes now? I don't think it's on iTunes, no. It is, it's not the single. It's just it's just the song. Oh, I'm glad you cleared that up. <laughs> is, what do, do we have us an official single that will be coming soon can, that you can tell us? Yes, there is an official single coming soon, but I'm going to wait to I'm going to wait to uh, reveal the name and the information because just because of all the leaks and everything, I just want to be super guarded with it. Mm-hmm. No problem, no problem. Um, in regards to other parts of your life beyond singing, you mentioned a little bit that you were acting in between this this break. Um, any more acting coming up? And and do you prefer acting over singing? I love to act, and I've been doing it professionally since I was uh, six years old. But music is something that I'm obsessed with. I can't live without. Mm-hmm. I feel like it gives me purpose. I feel like it completes me. And like I said, I love to act. But right now, at this, this point in my life, I'm going to focus on music and, and give this album the attention it deserves. Well, there were there were also some people telling me a little bit that you worked with Nick Jonas. And what, how did that collaboration come about? Oh my gosh! Well, I've been friends with the, the Jonas Brothers uh, for, gosh, like six years. Yeah, wow. probably about six years. And uh, we lived around the same area in Jersey, so we just kind of hold on a second. Sure. Freaking loud monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've stayed in touch and been cool over the years, and. Um, I think we just, you know, Hollywood style, as people reached out to my people, we got in the studio, and he's an exceptional talent. I was honestly blown away. Is this for your album or his album? And, well, this is a song that we did um, that was intended for my album, and I'm not sure if it's going to make it or not, but mm-hmm. I, I will say it's a great song, and he just impressed the 
hell out of me with his musicianship and his, he's very in tune and just very, you know, he pays great attention to details. I was, I was so impressed. Mm. Is there anyone that you're dying to collaborate with that you haven't collaborated with yet? Oh, man. I mean, yes, there's many people. Um, <laughs> Kanye West, probably my ultimate. Mm. As a producer and as an artist, he's mm -hmm. just, you know, and as a, just a creative force. He's just so incredible. Um, John Mayer and Andre 3000. Those are probably the ones for me. Wow, wow. You know, a lot of people It's um, we're talking about your recent cover that, that was, you know, posted online, Marvin's Room, Drake's the Drake cover. Um, and one of your fans, James Patrick uh, Leahy, I think it's pronounced, says, um, has she had any feedback um, from Drake himself on her version of Mar Marvin's Room, and will he be featured on Jumping Trains? Um, I have a feeling that he's heard it. I'm not going to say anything more than that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, all the, the responses... The, you know, all the feedback has been really positive, and um, I just, I'm really shocked and surprised and thankful for the, you know, for the response that, that the fans have given it, mm -hmm. and obviously very appreciative to Drake for making the song and, and inspiring me to write something to it. Um, why did you decide to do that? I don't know, no, he won't, won't be on Jumping Trains. I'm sorry? I know, why did you decide to actually to um, cover and write, you know, your own version to it? Well, my best guy friend, um, his name is Billy, mm -hmm. we always talk music, and mm -hmm. he's always like, Joe, dude, you got to listen to this song. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, you got to listen to this song, so we'll, we'll put each other on game. Mm -hmm. And um, one day, not too long ago, I mean, just just two days before I released it to the internet, basically, he called me and was like, listen to this song. And he's like, hang up the phone right now, go listen to this song. <laughs> so I did, and it was Marvin's room. He's like, this song reminds me of you, you gotta, you got to listen to it. So I did. And then I listened to it twice in a row, mm -hmm. called him back, I was like, yo, I'm going to write a verse. I'm, I'm going to write a version. He's like, really? He's like, okay, send me the lyrics. So 20 minutes later, I send him my lyrics. And he's like, did you just, did you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then he was like, um, and I, you know, talked to my manager, and I um, got in the studio when I landed back in L.A., because I was in New York that day, mm -hmm. going back to L.A., and um, went back in with a couple of my friends, we recorded it and put it out on the internet the next day. Just it happened very randomly. Wow, and it's it's really I mean it's over, I think like almost ten million views on YouTube already. Trust me, I'm I'm astonished. <laughs> that's that's pretty good, Jojo.